Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey, welcome back to Impact Weekly and another question. So today we're talking about meetings and the question we received was, what is the ideal way to prepare for meetings with customers? Mm. A simple question as such, but <laughs> I think there's a lot under it, right? Oh, of course. There's always way more to these questions. And especially, I think the, the, the more simple the question seems, the more there is to it. So I think with this one, I think we first need to talk about what a meeting really is. And Johan, you have a great way of, of looking at meetings that I think is just uh, just spot on. Yeah. No, I, I think this is a topic close to heart here. And I mean, meetings, I think we do them a lot, uh, of course, but what they really are, uh, I mean, it's not about this 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. sit down or call or Zoom or whatever with the customer. I think it's all about, actually, it's a process um, because we all know that like, it's not, the meeting is of course not the, not the goal. I mean, it's a means to an end, right? And this is where I think some some of us uh, forget that or we get lost yeah. in be, being just busy having a lot of meetings. So I think that's where we need to start here. And and why why is meetings really important? It's because we we really, it's a way for us. We put it in the calendar. It creates uh, time scarcity. It's, it's creates sense of urgency. It puts us on a deadline, yeah. which I think is really important. Um, and, and I think that's, I think this is where we, this is where it becomes really interesting to talk about this question and, 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 and getting back to preparations and so on. It's that meetings, uh, it's, it's a catalyst, right? Yeah, I mean, I I, I, just, I love that way of, of looking at this. It, it's it, the meeting itself is not what I call. I say the meeting itself is not the value metric. And so, to your point about you know people being busy, just doing you know having a lot of meetings, I see I see very often um, a full schedule of meetings almost being like a badge of honor, and exactly. it, it, that's just not the right way to look at it. And what happens is as a CSM, you start looking at the meeting as the thing that matters. The customers start looking at the meeting as the thing that matters, or, or maybe that's what they came in with. You know, I, mm. we agreed to have, you know, four meetings a week. It's like, well, yeah, but like, what's the point? What's, well, it doesn't matter. I just, we have to have those meetings. <laughs> it's like, no, let, let's take a step back here. The meeting itself is not the value metric, the outcome it, yeah. uh, the, the, the thing that we're trying to accomplish the customer's goal, right? That's the thing. So when you look at the meeting as a process rather mm -hmm. than just the one thing that's happening, you know, on the calendar, I think that's such a fantastic way to look at it. Yeah. And I think a lot of us we're, we're common mistake here is that we, we, we kind of, you know, think we're done when we had a good meeting or, I mean, of course, I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but sometimes it's like we, we go in with the meeting full of energy and when we're done, we're kind of like, oh, finally, we're, we, right. we're done with the meeting, right? But uh, I mean, we all know that a lot of time we sit in meetings, we agree on things and then nothing happens. And I think that's, that's what, we want, what we want to change here. And that's why <laughs> I think this question is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's funny. Like, I mean, the idea that sometimes we do feel good having just gotten through a meeting that's that probably shouldn't be the way that we're looking at things um th it's not just a relief that the meeting is over <laughs> i mean if 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 that's if the outcome of the meeting is that everyone is just happy that it's over i think we missed the mark um yeah but th so that goes back to this whole thing being a process and hmm. you know um creating you know ha putting something on the calendar like you said uh creating that sense of urgency around a deadline that you yeah. know Again, that's 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 why we have the meeting. It's why we schedule the meeting. If we otherwise, we could do everything asynchronously. 
um, and, which is you know certainly things that we can do, but we still yeah. g- generally build asynchronous engagement around uh, these these things that these synchronous meetings that are going to happen on the calendar to yeah. kind of keep us on on track. But going back to you know how do you prepare for this? Well, it's not just it's not just one thing that that we do to prepare for it. You kind of have to go through this whole it's a, well, it's a process. You yeah. you you first figure out why are we having the meeting? So what's the objective of this meeting? Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, if you got rid of all the meetings that, that you don't have a clear objective for, you'd probably open up a lot of time on your calendars. Um, you know, and then we, we figure out what, why we're actually having this meeting. What's the point of it. Then yeah. we need to schedule it. We create an agenda. We, we create uh, with our, with the customer or with the stakeholders, you know, what, like what they need to, do to prepare for the meeting. We need to figure out what we need to do to prepare. Then you have the meeting, you work it. There's going to be things that end up being sort of sidebars that you'll yeah. take offline during the meeting. There's going to be other follow-up from the meeting. So it's this whole process. Right. When you look at it that way, you're like, oh gosh, you know, that that 45 minute meeting that I had scheduled, that really is just one piece of this. And done right, it's just kind of a review of what all the work we did before planning yeah. the next steps, getting agreement, you know, and so it, it's that, it's that catalyst, like you said, to sort of yeah. get the work done because of the time, you know, because we have to have this meeting exactly. on this certain day, but then yeah. it's also a further catalyst to say, well, here's what we're going to do next. Yeah. And I think that's, I think we can all relate to when we had those really good, efficient meetings that don't take 45 minutes. They may even take just 20 minutes, yes. but we achieved a lot through that. We were prepared going in. The customer or the other counterpart was prepared going in. We agreed on some next steps and we took action immediately afterwards. So I think I, I think we all can relate to that, uh, but we can also, re- also, I think a lot of us can relate to sitting in a meeting that had no clear objective, we didn't get to anything and uh, the output outcome was very unclear. So uh, this, this meeting could have been an email uh, exactly. you know, and, and yeah. sometimes that email didn't need to be sent. So, I mean, like, yeah, no. I mean, it, it, we've all, we've all been there. And, and I think one of the weird things is just you, 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 you've sent, you said something that really that made me think there's, there's times where, again, if we're, if we're looking at the meeting itself as the value metric, we're looking at, you know, we have this 45 minutes or, or hour scheduled mm. and we get done in 20 minutes. We feel, we, we feel the need to fill the rest of the time because yeah. the meeting is what matters. Well, no, we were efficient. We got everything we needed done, done needed to do done in 20 minutes. Like, that's great. We should give everybody, you know, 40 minutes of their day back. But yeah. I think sometimes we feel guilty. Yeah. You know, it, like if it, we've put so much, uh, I don't know, stock in, in like an hour long meeting that we've, yeah. we've, we've just missed the whole point of what we're doing here, which is just to help the customer be successful. And if we can do that yeah. in 15 minutes, maybe not every meeting is going to be that efficient. But if you do that, yeah. that's great. Exactly. And I think the irony here is that if we, we, we kind of feel like we need to take the whole time in the meeting, uh, but on the other side, if we, we set off one hour to prepare, we almost feel guilty spending that much time not being in a meeting or not talking to a customer. Um, so wow. I think there is, uh, yeah, we, we need to reset our priorities here as well to pre- and, and see it more as a process where the meeting is the catalyst. The meeting is where we, where we uh, move things, uh, but we can do much more earlier. And of course, most importantly, we need to make sure that we move things after the meeting as well. Yeah, I mean, having having time to follow up, um, and of course, depending upon you know what what type of meeting it is, you know, follow up may some follow up may need to happen immediately. Um, you know, so you may want to make sure you, you schedule a buffer after, you know, a really complex meeting to make sure that you, you're able to, to spend some time doing the immediate follow-up things. Yeah. And then there's going to be things that you can follow up later in, in a, in a, in a follow-up block that you already have scheduled. Yeah. But like, it, it's, 
it really comes down to understanding what we're trying to do here. And, and so, you know, the meeting is, um, you know, for a reason, but what you just said about feeling guilty about like, you know, if I, if I took 15 minutes with the customer, but I took an hour to prepare for the call, I'm going to, that's somehow like, I'm going to feel bad about that or, or whatever. And that's real. I mean, I know, you know, it's business. We shouldn't feel bad about things and whatever, but like, this is we're, we work in reality here, and there are there are things like that which are absolutely our daily reality, and they're kind of weird. Like, isn't that yeah. weird if you think about it? Why would you feel guilt for preparing? But yeah, I've had heads of customer success when when we're doing capacity planning work, where we're saying, all right, well, you know, how many how many hours are required? Uh, sort of customer centric hours uh, yeah. are required for our CSMs, you know, to be able to deliver the appropriate experience to our customers, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They will it, it, very often heads of customer success will only include if we talk about customer facing activities or customer centric activities or whatever, they yeah. will only include meetings. Yeah. They don't. Well, that's no, <laughs> no, no. The meeting is just part of it. We need yeah. to think about time spent, preparing time spent following up, uh, et, et cetera. And so this is, I think uh, if we can change our way of looking yeah. at this, it's, it's huge. Yeah. And the same heads of customer success, they, they will be complaining about the low quality and the low yes. efficiency in these meetings <laughs> as well. So, so it's <laughs> right. like, yeah, something has to change here to, to, uh, get another, get a different result. And I think it's not about having longer meetings with the customer. It's about the preparation yes. and what we do at follow-ups. Right. Yes. Okay. I mean that you just, that was, that was perfect because you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's, we have to be looking at things the right way. And I think um, kind of getting into a little bit more detail here, yeah. Um, you know, there's not going to be any right. Of course, this is where I say it depends, or as, as I always say, it depends. It depends on your situation. But um, there's never going to be a, a generic, um, a generalized, normalized um, process that's going to work for every meeting. Right. So different types of meetings are going to require different levels of preparation, different amounts of lead time in order to do that preparation. So, you know, if it's a routine meeting where you're you're maybe going through a particular life cycle phase with a customer, you know, maybe it's onboarding or uh, or or, you know, different different stages of adoption. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're doing an account review, which is a review of the customer's account. (laughs) So, you know, usage, things like that. Or if you're doing a business review, which is reviewing the customer's business, um, yeah. you know, and how our product is helping them achieve their business outcomes, those are all going to be different, right? Different complexity, different uh, stakeholders involved, uh, different levels of you know sort of strategic importance. If it's an yeah. escalation meeting, you're not going right. to have a lot of lead time, but the re- but the preparation uh, for that is going to be. Uh, absolutely required. You're going to have to dig into sort of do some root cause analysis, whatever, what's going on there. So the types of meetings are going to sort of determine um, the process, yeah. uh, the complexity, the stakeholders, all of those things are going to, are going to determine um, the overall process of, of the meeting. So just, I wanted to kind of, you know, yeah. keep that in mind as we, of as course. we go about this too. And I think, yeah, so so definitely, but what I I believe like where this, we're back to the question here again, where let's look at preparation for these, like the, the most important type of meetings, if you like, the, the ones that makes them, where I think we can make a, a big difference as customer success. Um, I mean, if it's more of a part in the process or a very uh, routine type of meeting, I think those, Probably people know more more how to prepare, sure. but let's look at what, what what's needed for more. Say we have a we have a customer that we believe are on the wrong track, or we have a customer that we we believe we could uh, we, we know that we, we haven't spoken to for a while, and and these these more like important where we we 
we want to move the customer basically. Right. How right. do we prepare for those? Well, so we have in, in our objective confidence framework that we that we share in yep. the Impact Academy training, we have a, a section of that called preparation. And so essentially yep. what we're saying there is if you're better prepared for your meetings, you're gonna be more confident in your meetings. Exactly. Kind of, you know. And so in 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 that preparation, uh, we have multiple things that we we can do uh, to prepare. And that's everything from you know, doing research on, on the customer's um, usage, um, on, on their history with us, on their, um, you know, just uh, ha- what their goals are and sort of where they're, yeah. where they're at in terms of goal attainment, sort of analyzing that. Um, we, we say uh, having dialogue with other, um, other people inside of our company that also work with our customers so we can get a better idea yeah. of what's going on. Yes. Um, pulling together precedent or yep. um, uh, customer stories. This is an yep. interesting one where, you know, if if I if I'm going into a meeting with a customer and I, I want them to to do a certain thing because it's it's the it's what's going to help them achieve their goal, or mm. I want to have a strategic discussion about what their next goals would be. A great thing to bring to that meeting is other customers that have done that too. Um, yeah. Then you know it's almost like then you don't have to believe me. Look at what this customer did. Yeah, you know, yeah, or or other so customers. Powerful. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's a great thing to have. Um, of course, planning, just kind of thinking about going into the meeting. You know, what are the next steps? Understanding that at any point during the meeting, your customers could bring up things that 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 send us in a different direction, um, yeah. or that just change things even just slightly, and that's that's perfectly okay. I think that's the other thing is being okay with you know being flexible, I guess, a little bit, you know, with, with what comes out during the meeting. Now, obviously we want to do as much prep work and get as much from them as possible so that we don't have a lot of surprises on the meeting on the call, but, um, but that, that can definitely happen. And and so one of the other things, so all of that prep work is stuff that you probably would do to some degree, to some degree, no matter what kind of meeting you're having, obviously the more, urgent, the more important, the more complex the meeting is, the more time you're going to spend doing each of those things. But there's one other thing that goes into preparation that, especially for the more complex and strategic meetings, um, that I I love to see CSMs do, but that a lot of people don't do because you either don't know about it, (laughs) or or maybe you've heard uh, that you should do it, but you're not quite, uh, quite sure exactly how to do it. And that's brainstorming. Yeah. Um, this is one of those things, you know, that, that, that we talk about a lot in impact Academy, uh, that we do with, with customers, companies we work with. Um, let's talk a little bit more about brainstorming. Yeah, no, but I think, I mean, the things you mentioned previously, I think those are, are setting us up for, to do this, because if we do the research, if we look into the context of this customer, we look, we have some precedents, I think we are, that's when we can brainstorm. We can actually just throw, like empty our brain of ideas. What can we do with this customer? Yeah. So, so I think it's uh, it's such a, I, this is not, n- not a revolution or anything, but, but people forget this, but mm-hmm. this is such a key part when you, when you go into uh, the process of having a good meeting with a customer, this is part of that. It's a very key part of it. And it's going to, unlock a lot of things for us when we when we start doing this and uh, so I, I think the brainstorming we, what we do what, what we see coming out of the program when we do this with with uh, CSMs I mean it's amazing uh, th- I think people it's not it's not a, I mean it's just a new way of, of looking at things mm-hmm. when you uh, prepare right I, I think you said it you know really well this isn't like revolutionary you know we're not in, we're not inventing something here it's just um, it's just something that, uh, you know, has been around a long time. We just don't always apply it to what we're trying to do here with our customers. And I think brainstorming, brainstorming is one of those things though. Um, and we're going to talk about a couple examples here in a second, so I'm not going to leave you hanging, but, um, when, when you say you should brainstorm, I mean, I think people are like, okay, cool. And then they go, go away and they don't do it because it feels like something you should know how to do. And yeah you're not going to ask. So somebody says you should go brainstorm. You say, of course, 
and then you're not, you're not going to ask him like, well, how do I do that? Because it feels yeah. like something you should just know how to do, but why it's a skill like anything else. Yeah. So some of the things that we, we, um, we want to brainstorm around is so, like you said, you after you do the, you do the other preparation stuff. So you've, you've done the research, you've analyzed that you've gathered the customer stories. You've, you have a pretty good idea of sort of situational awareness of your customer. Well, now yeah. you can start thinking about, okay, here's what I think the next steps are for the customer. Mm. Okay, cool. So you kind of lay those out. Now you can think what might the customer ask yeah. about those next steps? Yeah. What might some of their concerns be? What would yeah. be what what are some objections they might have? Yeah. So you don't know what they're going to ask. You don't know what their objections are going to be. But you have two yeah. choices. You can either go into the meeting with no idea, uh, yeah. having, you know, not thought about that at all, and right. then they bring up the objections. Yeah. And you've never even thought that they would do that, and so now you're just completely lost. Or you can take 10 minutes and come up with a list of objections that they might have to, to just doing the thing that you're requesting or questions they might have, concerns they might have. Hmm. And so when they bring these things up, even if it's not what you thought, yeah. you've at least gone through the process of thinking about these things and then thinking about if they bring up an objection like uh, hmm. we don't have the resources, okay, what are two or three ways I might answer that? Yeah. You know, what are two or three ways that we might be able to work past that objection? So just spending some time thinking about what your customer might bring up or what mm. the different stakeholders might bring up, you're going to be in, you're going to be in such a different place from a, uh, a preparation standpoint than, than just going through the research and everything that, you know, the, all the other stuff, you're going to be in such a better place that your confidence is going to be a lot higher. And, yeah. and frankly, your confidence to say, Hmm, I don't know. Let me go do some research yeah. on that. Or let me go talk to my colleagues. You're going to be in a better place to say that because you've already thought about these things and you're not in the moment scrambling because you never even thought about the fact that they would even object. Why would somebody object to doing something that's going to help them? Well, they do that all the time. So brainstorming is super critical and it's yeah. something I hope more and more CSMs will do. Now, you know, you're not always going to have time to do it. So I say, leave yeah. it at least at least do it for the more complex meetings. Um, but, but, but it's also like we talk about in the training program. I mean, this is also a habit. This is something, this is a muscle that you train. Yes. So you get better and faster in doing this. So it's also about getting, getting used to it. And then it becomes like a, yeah. Uh, yeah. It becomes natural uh, more and more natural to, for you. So the, yes. the, the less it, time you need actually. And, and that's, that's, that's perfect. I mean, it will take longer at first, you yeah. know, it, it will be frustrating. Every everything, any skill, you know, um, but eventually you will get to a point. And I mean, we this is I've, I've I've seen this. I mean, this is when we do this in practice with with yeah. companies. Like you will get to the point where literally five or ten minutes, you're going to be able to come up with a lot of amazing yeah. ideas to go into a meeting with, and you're it's going to just keep you from being thrown you know, and, and thrown off your, off your game yeah. when a customer brings up something because you've already thought about at least similar things. And so it's, yeah. it's huge. So brainstorming is a, is a, is a big part of, um, uh, of preparation, but yeah. you know, I will say honestly though, at least, at least do the other stuff, <laughs> but, but try to build some time yeah. for brainstorming. Just, just one point to that as well is that when you do, when you see the meeting as part of a process uh, and when you do this preparations properly, you also realize that how can I prepare, how can I get the customer to be more yes. prepared coming into the meeting? Uh, and that unlocks even more things for you because if you can get them even more prepared, you will achieve more in the meeting and bring your, uh, bring them for, bring the next steps uh, faster, uh, get the next steps going faster from the meeting as well. So I think that's, that's also part of this, being prepared, seeing it as a process um, and, and getting, getting the customer going into the meeting more prepared. So, uh, okay, so that's, that's fantastic. And I think if we were to sort of wrap this up with three very yes. practical ideas, yeah. Let's start. I mean, number one would be just what you said. It's something that we don't we don't think about as often, but making sure that the customer is also prepared. 
So yeah. I think that's that's number one. Number um, one. If I had to come up with uh, the second one, it would be understand the level of, of preparation required for the different meeting types. So yeah. we laid out a few different meeting types, but you know, yeah. the, it'll differ for you, but what type of preparation needs to happen for each of those? And just make sure when you're scheduling your meetings that yeah. you, well, I guess. Number uh, three. Yeah. <laughs> Number three. We need to, we need to, I think a very wise man said to me once that you need to block time for thinking time. And I think it's it's even more important in, I mean, it's important for every team and every person, but I think in customer success, we forget that sometimes. We need to block time to do these preparations, to have this thinking time, to be able to do really efficient meetings. That is part of the process. So I, those are three things to do to prepare and get the most out of your meetings. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.